A Tale of Dragons Where are all the dragons, Jax? Hildy asked. Jax lowered his enormous head to the floor in a mournful gesture, just so that his eye was almost low enough for Hildy to touch. This is a long tale, and a difficult one to tell. Would you have it spoken? Hildy sat down on a small boulder and nodded. Please? The enormous eye closed for a few seconds. Then the tale began. One thousand years ago, well, more dragons ruled this world. They were magnificent and terrible, and the lands were shaped by their will alone. Humans were small, pathetic creatures scurrying about, hiding from our gaze. But some of the dragons found them fascinating and taught them how to speak and how to shape the land. Some of us objected to this. It was not right for these creatures to control the powers of dragons, even in imitation, but it was not our way to interfere with each other. So the humans began to learn of language, creation, and even fire. One dragon. Hmm. The cave rumbled at the sound of Jack's thinking. For you, he shall be called ignorance. Ignorance? Can you not speak his real name? asked Hildy. Jax's giant eyes stared at her. No. He continued. One dragon named Ignorance became enraged when he saw the humans controlling fire, and so he destroyed them and all they had created in a single terrible night of rage. So began the dragon wars, for these humans were the servants of the mother. And when she awoke, she saw what had been wrought by ignorance, and as was her right, her duty, she visited the same wrath upon him. First his works, his hoard, his lair were destroyed. Then, as the sun rose in a blood-red sky, the first dragon died. The other dragons bowed before the mother's will, but though the act was her right alone, the way of dragons was forever changed. The first to act was greed. He flew with great strokes to the lair of famine, who had begun collecting the prizes of humans, and whose hoard was now massive, and consumed it all. Gold, tools, art, and meat fell into his mouth from sunset to sunrise, until famine finally returned. He attacked greed with all his might and fury. But Creed was the largest of the dragons, and though his overwhelming power and strength, Famine was defeated. As the sun rose to its zenith, Creed crushed Famine's neck between his massive jaws, and thus the second dragon died. The larger dragons accepted this as the new way and continued as before, but the smaller dragons grew wary, resentful. The dragon Vengeance plotted and planned, and began teaching his humans to work metals, to build weapons and traps, to hunt. While he did, greed claimed more lives. Envy was the f next to fall, then gluttony. But when greed landed in Vengeance's lair to claim his hoard, he was attacked. Vengeance did not appear, but his human followers had been lying in wait, and they leapt out to defend their master's possessions. Chains of iron ensnared greed, spears pierced his hide, and humans climbed to his back to cut holes in his wings, but Vengeance did not appear. The battle raged and dragon blood clubbed the floor of the lair, but eventually greed broke the last chain, burned the last machine, and crushed the last human. He turned towards the horde, tired and bleeding, and began to feast. Still, vengeance did not appear. Finally, greed devoured the last gem and the last beast, and turned to leave. He unfurled his ragged wings and prepared to fly, and only now did vengeance come, diving from the sky and shredding greed's wings to ribbons. He roared in rage as vengeance fled back into the sky, but with broken wings and a belly full of gold, he could not follow. He roared again in mockery as vengeance bathed his scales in fire. He bit and swiped and burned the sky, but vengeance was too fast, too clever to get hit. 
The barrage continued for hours, and greed, tired, wounded, and bloated, could do nothing. Finally, he roared again, in fear. His scales were melting from the constant fire, his blood mixing with them so they became rigid, inflexible, fusing with each other and with his flesh. Finally, vengeance landed and challenged greed with cold fury. Greed stared at him in rage and fear, but could do nothing. His own armor fused into a solid, inflexible prison. Vengeance stalked forward and slowly, cruelly slid a talon through Greed's underbelly and into his heart. Thus, the first great dragon died, and thus the war began in earnest. The small dragons began to imitate vengeance, teaching the humans more and more skills and preparing traps. The largest dragons became resentful, and the largest of them, pride, began to hunt the small ones relentlessly. The smallest dragon, cowardice, sought out the mother, hoping she could end the war, but she had fallen into a deep slumber and could not be awoken. The dragons fell one by one, and cowardice fled beneath the ground, squirming through cracks and tunnels into caverns where the others could not follow. The battles raged until pride stood alone, the last remaining dragon. He finally allowed himself to rest, confident that he had vanquished every threat. But with no dragons to fear, and all the secrets that had been shared with them, the humans had grown strong. As pride slumbered, they began to build great cities and powerful weapons. They even created their own magic, and through it, the one secret the dragons had kept from them was finally discovered. Flight. The humans soared above the clouds, bringing a great army up to Pride's lair at the top of the tallest peak. The battle raged for days, weeks. Blood poured down the mountain, both human and dragon, until finally the sun set, falling into a deep purple horizon. Thus, the last dragon fell, and the world became the domain of humans. Hildy leaned back against the shoulder, the boulder. Jax, you know humans only invented flight recently, only a few years before I was born. I'm pretty sure there weren't any dragons around then. Jax stared at her with his huge, unblinking eye. How long have you been down here? She whispered. The eye slowly closed. Hildy got up and walked over to Jax's giant head. With her arms stretched as wide as they could go, she grabbed onto the largest, most dangerous, most powerful creature in the world and gave him a hug. <laughs>